Hello and welcome to Alexpo and the Football Manager Wonder Kids are back and this time we're looking at Football Manager 2007. The third incarnation of the game was released back on October 18th 2006, just months after Ilya secured their fourth World Cup crown and Zinedine Zidane had ended his career in disgrace by headbutting the absolute soul out of Marco Matarazzi. Elsewhere, the number one single at the time was Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake, which four years on is still an absolute banger. But which of these Wonder Kids will still be bangers 14 years on? My name's James and this is 9 Wonder Kids from Football Manager 2007, where are they now? Number 1 Alexis Sanchez As always I'm starting off with a big name and a superstar who FM started back in the day when he was just out of his nappies. When the game was released in 2006 Alexis Sanchez had already completed the move to a European club but it'd still be a while before he got to test himself there. Udinese signed him in April 06 and immediately loaned him out with Chilean not making his Udinese debut until 2008. But Sanchez was doing enough in South America to catch the eye of the FM decision makers who gave him the potential to go all the way in the game. And to some extent, they were right. While Sanchez's career has been a bit of a disaster since that lucrative move to Man United where he played the piano, before then he was unstoppable. At Barcelona he would win trophies galore and at Arsenal he got the chance to prove him to be the main man and carry that burden on his hefty shoulders. Nowadays he's with Antonio Conte's Premier League rejects at Inter Milan but can certainly look back at a stellar career. But seriously, what was that piano all about? Number 2 Sherman Cardenas From a South American superstar to one who just didn't live up to the FM hype. That brings us to Sherman Cardenas, a Colombian attacker who was back to be just as good, maybe even better than Alexis Sanchez. He was just 17 when the game came out but that didn't stop FM giving him potential to go right to the top and he was a bargain meaning that most people that played FM07 probably had this lad in the team. But while Sanchez has won trophies and captain in his country, Cardenas merely goes down as a legendary FM wonder kid flop. The early hype quickly died down and Cardenas never actually made it out of South America. He's now 31 years old and thankfully still playing, representing Junior in his native Colombia. South American football expert Tim Vickery once said the pressure of the FM hype got to Cardenas and when you look at his career you've got to wonder how true that is. Was the hype too much for him or in reality was he just not as good as anticipated? Number 3 Luka Modric Next up we've got a player once dubbed the worst signing of the season at Madrid who proved everyone wrong and went on to win the Ballon d'Or. But way back in 2006 he was just a little Croatian youngster playing his football for Dynamo Zagreb. With incredible passing and vision it looked like Modric had the makings of a top player and FM agreed by giving him huge potential. Two years later he rejoined Tottenham where he'd kickstart his road to becoming one of the best midfielders in world football. So everyone was right about Modric, except for the Spanish press who pardoned him after a year and the Newcastle hierarchy who decided not to sign him back in 2008. Number 4 Hugo Rodriguez. Following Luka Modric we've got another former Premier League player but a man who wasn't quite as successful in England. But football manager 2007 didn't know that back in the day as 14 years ago Hugo Rodriguez was still playing his football in Mexico. When you look at his goal scoring record early on in his career it's unsure why Rodriguez had such high potential in FM and once he got to Wigan it was clear that he wasn't quite the star the computer game had pretty turned out to be. He had a couple of okay seasons then dropped off and he was even less impressed with Fulham where he'd eventually suffer relegation. Never really prolific in his career, Rod Eager is now 35 and is the captain of Turkish side Den Silspor. Number 5 Lucas Leiva The ex Premier League players continue with former Liverpool man Lucas Leiva once tipped for stardom by football manager 2006. However I don't think they predicted he would want to become an internet sensation of that unlucky clip. Back then Lucas was yet to arrive at Anfield and was instead finding his feet at Gremio as a teenager. He's the kind of signing you love to make on Football Manager, honestly most of my teams are made up of young South Americans like this and Lucas Leiva was one to sign back in the day, a holding midfielder who can win tackles and protect the defence. That's exactly what he became in reality, spending 10 years in the Premier League with Liverpool and now he's 33 he's still playing at a high level but now represents Serie A outfit Lazio. Number 6 Oscar Ustari Speaking of signing young South American stars, Oscar Ustari is a Football Manager legend. If you needed a goalkeeper it was normally a toss up between him or Guillermo Ochoa. But while Ochoa has played more than 100 times for his native Mexico, Argentina's Oscar Ustari has kept in there for his country just twice. Ustari was at Independiente at the time of FM07's release and was a former teammate of Sergio Aguero. Both players would make it to the Premier League but while Aguero was a multi time winner Ustari merely just spent a few months on loan at Sutton where he only got to play in the cup. Not the star FM predicted, Ustari is at least still playing with a 35 year old representing Pachuca in Mexico where weirdly is the number 5, that's wrong on so many levels, get in the bin. Number 7 John Obi Mikel When Football Manager 2007 was released John Obi Mikel was already a household name 
but not for his performances, but for the incredible transfer saga that had already been rumbling on. First he signed for Man United, even holding a shirt and doing a press conference. Then there were counterclaims from Chelsea and even an alleged kidnapping. In the end the saga was settled out of court and Chelsea got their man, but basically had to pay twice for the privilege. So when FM07 came out he was already at Chelsea and already had a big spotlight on him. Mikel was a great player for Chelsea, but was he worth all the fuss? I'm not quite sure to be honest. The way Man United and Chelsea were scrapping over him you'd think he was going to be the next Maradona. But Mikel was far from it, a player who was pretty appalling when it came to attacking, but luckily he could do the dirty side of the game. The Nigerian still plays his football in England and is currently in the championship with Stoke City. Fortunately there's been no more kidnappings, although it has happened to his dad twice back in Nigeria, what's going on? Number 8, Joe. I don't know what it was about Joe, but I always liked him. Maybe it was just because of the simple nature of his name, just Joe, J-O, Joe. But on Football Manager back in the day, he was a goal machine. When FM07 released, he was just in the midst of his first season in Europe, having joined CSK in Moscow from Corinthians. And it looked like this was another Brazilian gem that just had to go right to the top, where his fellow countryman Ronaldo and Rivaldo had been before. Joe was great in Russia, and he was even better on Football Manager. A great finisher who was strong in the air, if you had Joe on your team, you were guaranteed goals. But by the time he got to England, he was naff. At Manchester City, he was naff, and he was immediately loaned out to Everton. But despite Joe's struggles, he would still play 20 times for Brazil, including at the 2014 World Cup. Joe was now enjoying his third spell with Corinthians at the grand old age of 33. And number 9, Nani. We end things with another man to ply his trade in the Premier League, and a winger that was typically the next Cristiano Ronaldo. Just like Ronaldo, Nani emerged from the Sporting Academy, jumped ahead of Fabio Pine, and on Football Manager 2007 was clearly one of the must-have young wingers on the game. He cost a lot of money, but my word it was worth it. In reality though, he never did match up to Ronaldo. He was basically Ronaldo Light, the diet version that you just don't want. But still, he's had some stunning moments in his career, including incredible goals and loads of trophies. But while Ronaldo is still at the top of his game, Nani's overplaying in the MLS for Orlando City. But he can go to Disneyland whenever he wants, so who's the real winner? So there we go, those are 9 wonder kids from Football Manager 2007 and where they are now. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo. And until next time, we will see you around.